Pakenham and Cranbourne lines, two icons of Melbourne located in the southeast of the city. The Pakenham line was opened in parts between 1877 and 1879 and was a part of the Gippsland line which now serves the V-line services to Bansdale. Suburban services first reached Pakenham in 1975. The Cranbourne line was opened in 1886, electrified in 1995, it was a part of the South Gippsland line which ran to Leon Gatha until 1993. And without further ado, let's start at Carnegie Station. Carnegie Station opened on the 2nd of April 1879 and was named Rostown, renamed Carnegie in 1909. In 2017, it was ranked the ninth worst station for customer service, but after the Skyrail was built, it became the second best. Carnegie serves 764,923 passengers and is a beautiful station. Next up, we move to Murrumbina. Murrumbina Station opened on the 14th of May 1879 and serves 717,000 passengers. In peak periods, the level crossing at Murrumbina was the most congested in the state. Both old and new stations are beautiful and Murrumbina is a great place. Now we move to Hughesdale. Hughesdale Station opened on the 28th of February 1925 and was named after James Vincent Hughes, the Mayor of Oakley at the construction of the station. The station buildings were lost to a fire in 1975 and in 2019, the new station is 250 metres west of the old one on the other side of Poth Road. Next, we go to Oakley, which is filled with history. Oakley Station was opened on the 6th of October 1877 and has so much history, it deserves its own video. When opened, it served the terminus of both the Rostown Railway and the Outer Circle Line due to Houston not being opened yet. In 1915, the station was upgraded and at one point had five tracks running through it. In 1966, the Warrigal Road level crossing was removed and in 1975 the tracks were largely simplified. The station has been the place of two derailments, one in 1981 and one in 1982. In 1995 when the Cranbourne line was electrified, trains that terminated at Oakley were not needed and in 2018 the three platforms were simplified to just two, with Platform 1's tracks being removed. At the present time, the station is getting major upgrades. With integration of the old and new, this station will become awesome. The passenger numbers are over 1.8 million, and the next station is Huntingdale. Huntingdale Station was opened on the 25th of June 1927 and was named East Oakley, renamed in 1954. In 2018, the station received upgrades, including more parking and this bus interchange. The station receives over 1.4 million passengers every year and I think it's time to go to Clayton Station. Clayton Station was opened on the 6th of January 1880 and was named Clayton Road, renamed in 1891. The station and area is named after Clayton Vale. Built in 1850, Clayton Vale was one of the first buildings in the area and was built by John Hughes Clayton. On New Year's Eve in 2012, a fire occurred, destroying the 100 year old waiting room. If you exit the station and walk behind it, you will find the old waiting shelter that was built in 1891. And inside is filled with history, facts and photos that is definitely worth a quick visit. With passenger numbers just under 1.8 million, it's one of the busiest stations on the line. And with that, we go to Westall. When first opened in 1954, Westall Station was only a worker's station. Served the railway coach building factory, which now holds the Westall maintenance facility. The general public could not get off at this stop until 1859. 1859? I mean 1959. In 2006, the platform I'm on right now, Platform 1, was destroyed by a fire and trains ran through Westall during that time. In 2008, major upgrades were approved and were completed in 2010, which included a third platform. Annual passenger numbers are 941,000 and I think it's time to go to Springvale. Springvale opened on the 1st of September 1880 and was known as Spring Vale and was named Springvale in 1972.
in 1976, the goods platform was removed and 20 years later, it was a premium station. In 2010, the final remnants of the Springvale Cemetery line were removed to make way for this new Willow Ground Station, which was completed in 2014. Springvale Cemetery, you hear me say? Well, check this out. Springvale Station is just under there and we've come 200 meters up the track. So, if we use a little bit of an imagination and pretend that the tracks are at level, you see that tracks would junction here and follow over there, over to Springvale Cemetery Station. And that used to be the Springvale Cemetery line. This photo taken from Springvale Station in 1969 shows the Springvale Cemetery line junctioning off to the left. I will be doing a separate video on this. I guess this is just a little teaser of what it might be like. Anyway, back to Springvale Station. Springvale has just under 1.7 million passengers every year. I think it's time to go to Sandown Park. Sandown Park opened in 1889 as Oakley Racecourse and renamed in 1892. The station was built to serve Sandown Racecourse and it even had sidings for special race trains which was opened until 1955. The station closed in 1955 and stayed that way for 10 years until 1965 when it opened to the public. There are some really cool racing murals in the subway entrance and even a Peter Brock tribute. I'm at the northern end of the platform and fun fact, although nothing's there today, there used to be another subway entrance which you could enter from both sides. Passenger numbers, 527,000. Next station, Noble Park. Noble Park opened on the 3rd of February, 1913 and has 876,000 passengers annually. The station was originally south, however arsonists destroyed that and in the 1960s, a station was built on the current site. The new station was built with the Heatherton, Chandler and Corrigan Road level crossings in 2018. Noble Park was named after Alfred Noble, the Nobel Prize, but the spelling was changed after common usage. Now, on to Yarraman Station. Yarraman Station was opened in 1976 and was almost named Fotheringham after a local family. During peak periods, some trains skip the station with passenger numbers at 284,000. In some Aboriginal cultures, the word Yarra translates to crazy. So you could call this station Crazy Man. Anyway, I think that's enough from Yarraman. Time to head to Dandenong. Dandenong Station opened on the 8th of October in 1877 and is the ninth busiest station in Melbourne. The station was rebuilt in 1975 and again in 1994 when the Cranbourne line opened. The unique configurations of the tracks mean that any train going any way can depart from any platform. 24 different bus routes go through the adjacent bus interchange. With just under 2.2 million passengers, we move to an amazing thing about the Pakenham line. Before we do that, we say goodbye to the Cranbourne line, for now. Opened in 1956, General Motors Station served the General Motors car factory. The station closed in 2002, with the last train stopping on the 26th of July. I will be doing another video on General Motors, so make sure to look out for that. But until then, let's go to Hallam. Hallam opened on the 1st of December 1880 as Hallam's Road, renamed in 1904. The word Hallam derives from Old English language meaning remote valley and the station has 583,000 passengers. Hallam's Road level crossing is set to be removed by 2022 and with that we go to Narrowarren. Narrowarren station opened on the 10th of March 1882 and has 733,000 passengers annually. The station was originally west of Webb Street before being relocated east in 1993. The railway bridge east of the station was completed in 2004 and I think Berwick is the next stop. Berwick was opened on the 8th of October in 1877 and is named after Berwick-on-Tweed, the most northern part of England which was the birthplace of an early settler. Passenger numbers are just under a million each year and Clyde Road is set to be constructed under the train line by 2022, removing another crossing. I also reckon Berwick has a pretty impressive garden feature as well, maybe the best in the system. Anyway, on to Beaconsfield. Beaconsfield Station opened in 1879, has 290,000 passengers and has an abandoned entrance at the eastern end of the station. The station is named after Lord Beaconsfield, a two-time Prime Minister of England in the 1800s. 
Unfortunately, the quiet station is rated the 10th worst station for customer service in 2019. And that's not good. <laughs> and now, on to Officer. Officer Station opened on the 4th of August 1881 as Officer's Siding, renamed in 1899, and moved east of the original site in 1956. It is the third least used suburban station with 91,956 annual passengers. This is due to it being surrounded by green, which will become housing in the near future. It's rated the ninth worst station in Melbourne, one behind Beaconsfield, for it being a very basic station with only one small shelter on each side. And with that, we ride to Cardinia Road. Works began on Cardinia Road in October of 2010 and it opened 18 months later on the 22nd of April 2012. The word Cardinia refers to the Aboriginal word meaning look to the rising sun and the newest station on the line has 420,000 annual passengers. Cardinia Road level crossing will be removed by next year with the road going over the tracks and it looks like we reach Pakenham. Pakenham Station opened on the 8th of October 1877 and serves 576,000 passengers. The terminus of the line first saw suburban trains in 1975 and is situated 58 kilometres from the Southern Cross. Main Street level crossing along with two others between Cardinia Road and Pakenham are set to be removed. One of the features of this project is a brand new Pakenham Station. Some of the new HCMT trains are stored and tested three kilometres down the line. Anyway, let's get back to Dandenong and go on the Cranbourne line. Lynbrook Station opened on the 22nd of April 2012 and has 406,000 annual passengers. The station was planned to open in 2011, however under budgeting of electricity made the project stall. Due to it being so new, the station is yet to begin any changes or history to it, other than the reputation of Rowdy Station. Anyway, let's move on. Marinda Park Station opened on the 24th of March in 1995 with the electrification of the Cranbourne Line. Annual passenger numbers are 389,000 and the station gets its name from a nearby park with the word Marinda meaning beautiful. The station is set to gain an upgrade in 2022 when the Cranbourne Line will get fully duplicated tracks. And finally, we move to Cranbourne. Cranbourne Station opened on the 1st of October in 1888 and for the majority of its life has served the V-Line services to Leongatha. Suburban trains first came here in 1995 when the line to Cranbourne was electrified. The last train to pass through Cranbourne and go to Leongatha was in 1998. However, there will almost certainly be more trains passing through Cranbourne in the future with plans to extend the line to Clyde or East Cranbourne. Plans for the future are made even more clear when you see they haven't even removed the signals or the tracks that go all the way to Leongatha. Cams Road level crossing before the station will be removed within four years as a part of Cranbourne line upgrades. And there you go, all the stations on the Pakenham and Cranbourne lines. Time for an outro. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something about the Pakenham and Cranbourne lines because I loved it. <laughs> like and subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below which line you'd like me to do next. And until next time, goodbye.